VTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, www.wvtcradio.com, or download our WVTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. are tuned to WVTCRadioDetroit.com to the Sandy Rose Show with your host Sandy Rose where you'll hear the finest in gospel music, insightful conversation, and guests that will enhance you. The Sandy Rose Show can be heard every Monday and Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, live on YouTube. So get your pencil, paper, and shouting shoes and get ready for today's broadcast. Why not text a friend or tag a friend and tell them to listen to? When you enter life apart from God and His grace, that's isolation. When God comes to see you, that's visitation. When he unveils the mysteries of eternity, that's revelation. When you think of his marvelous goodness, that's meditation. When you expect to see him, that's anticipation. When you feel his spirit moving in your heart, that's motivation when you share in kingdom building that's participation when you tell of his goodness and his mercy that's recitation when you glorify and praise him that's celebration. And when all of these belong to your experience, you can't help but to shout. Oh, you may or may not do it the way others do it, but you'll do something. You'll open up. You will let go. You'll give vent to the Spirit You'll let the overflow flow. You may not jump up and down, but you'll shed a tear. You may not cry, but you'll pat a foot. You may not pat a foot, but you'll clap your hands. Something will happen. Something will move you. Something will touch you. And you'll feel something. So you can say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God that spoke to Mother's Earth and she dressed up in a green garment. He rolled this terrestrial ball into space, baptized it with the liquid mist, laid out the green carpet on the earth, tacked it down with daffodils, snapdragons, lilies, roses, and trees. He ordered a variety of blooming flowers and transfigured it into marvelous attraction. Praise God 
the one that deferred the council of the Holy Trinity and organized an angelic host to furnish music while the glory of his father flooded the hills of Bethlehem, stepped on a heavily made airplane and rolled down in a low ground of sorrow, leaped into the Virgin Mary and was born one day in the city of David, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Praise God who makes me walk like I'm rich and I don't have to have a dime in the bank. Praise God who allows me to sleep on a pillar of peace and a cushion of confidence. He opens doors that no man can shut and if I'm running a little late, he'll hold them open until I get there. Praise God. He's our rock, our strength, our hope. Our Lord, our Savior, our all and all. Praise God, who said to the triune, Let us make man, and the word let went into action, and God stooped down, gathered dust together, piled it up in the earth, molded it, and made it like he wanted it. And when he was satisfied with that, he had made with his own hand, he stood it up to his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. This is why we praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name. You're worthy to be praised.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He has done great man, things. Man, I don't man. care if you think it the slow way. He has done great things for me. Or you done, however you sing it, it's a true statement. He has done great things. Yes, sir. Richard, you better blow them bubbles over there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Has on his tux. This is a happy day. We it, this is everybody is happy today. Everybody. <laughs> yes, sir. Ooh. You better play the applause. Everybody. Yes, yes, yes. And we are so glad to be back. Uh, today, I just got back this morning. Y'all don't know how tired I am. <laughs> tired I am, tired I am. You don't know how tired I am. But won't he will, won't he will. Serving the Lord, it makes it worth every bit of it. And you don't mind being tired for the Lord. So we just want to say Thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you. First of all, thank you to the Lord of hosts, listen, Amen. who always causes us to triumph. Uh, we thank him for what he has done. First of all, for allowing us to make it through those 115 degrees. And if you don't believe it was 115 degrees, look on my page. I took a picture <laughs> of the thermometer. It all said right. 115. And he all allowed right. us to make it through that. And everybody that uh, was at uh, the Stellar Awards uh, was okay. Everybody had a wonderful, wonderful time. And um, it's just it's just been beautiful. We thank God. Uh, well, we want to open the show officially um, and say uh, we want to welcome everybody to the Sandy Rose Show. I am Sandy Rose, and you are? I am Teresa Acton. Is he froze? And is Richard froze? Obviously, he must be froze because he needs to wipe the camera off, too. Oh, or is it, or is it the smoke from the fire? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> I think that's the smoke. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. You don't hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Am I supposed to say something now? Yes. Well, you I am Richard Daryl Nichols. Say I am Richard Daryl Nichols, all the way from Chino. And Las Vegas, California. Las Vegas, right. California. Yeah, Las Vegas, California. All so right. And he's back. going to be your new teacher, kid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got right. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, we are here and uh we are so happy. Uh, that we were there. Uh, we we just returned back, as you are, if you've been watching our Facebook pages and all of that. Uh, we just returned back from Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, the desert, the city in the desert. And I think they call it now Salvation City. Um, oh, yeah, know. yeah, they call it Salvation City. So, uh, yeah, they <laughs> turned that around. You know, it used to be Sin City. And they yeah. turned it around to Salvation City. Well, we were there uh, with the Saints, and the Saints made a mark uh, in the just in the vicinity. Everywhere you looked, you saw a gospel singer, and uh, it was it was marvelous. And we uh, WVTC Gospel Radio Network, which is Chicago and Detroit. Uh, brought home the Stellar Award. This is the plaque that announces that we were nominated. It's only four stations that get nominated. So we are one of the four that was nominated. So every nominee gets a plaque. But uh, we went beyond nomination and we got the big dog. All right. Yeah, we, we got the big dog. Lena, we're going to save your comment for next year because this said the third. So um, this is only the second. But uh, we we thank you for thinking forward. Amen. You profit. We're going to call you prophetess. Uh, 
<laughs> and we're going to let you call it. But uh, we were able, when they called our name, uh, then we were able to go up to the stage and get our reward. Amen. 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 <laughs> we got our reward and we were so, so very happy. And not only for us, but we were happy for you all because you all share in this just as much um, right. as in this in this award that we received, Teresa, Pastor Jackie, um, those who are regulars on this show, every one of our hosts, Pastor Weaver, uh, Larry Whitfield, who is our station manager, who does so much here for WVTC and has really taken on a heavy lift here at the station. And we really, really, really really, really appreciate him and for what he does. Um, we want to thank uh, Pastor Fudge. We want to thank Nikki. Uh, they always come through with what they are assigned to do. We want to thank Pastor Bowman, uh, Dean Dottie for what she does. We thank uh, Commissioner, the Honorable Edna Bell. Today she had on none other than uh, actor and activist Hill Harper. Uh, was a guest on her show today. So, you know, you you don't know what's going to come on WVTC. But we have a top-notch, top-notch team. And we want to also thank Bishop Woods, uh, who helped us to get across that finish line uh, with his programs and uh, Dr. Marjorie Holt and, and all the rest. And um, we want to also say to my pastor, um, my pastor, who was the first one who started on the station with me when I said, Doc, we're going to do this. Um, what you see, do the Lord say the same? Because uh, he is a man of God and he is a prophet. And he said, saying, let's do this. And we did it. He was the first one to come on the station. And uh, he has just been one uh, that has just carried the load, carried the load. And always here, we want to thank everybody for their consistency. And I think it was consistency that won the race. Um, we have consistent shows here on WVTC. We have a consistent audience. We're building up a community. Uh, Teresa, uh, I, I can't say enough about Teresa. I can't say enough of, enough about Shirley. I can't say enough about Diane, uh, Sojourner, and Regina, and Roosevelt. I, er, if I started calling names, I'm going to forget somebody. But everybody whose name has popped up so far on this screen, everybody um, is a winner. And we thank you all, you, you, and even you, because you voted, you listened, first of all, and then you turned around and you voted. Um, and we, we certainly, certainly appreciate all that you have done for us. And yes, uh, uh, Dr. Lavelle Nero, we want to congratulate him, uh, and, uh, Anthony White, and the Detroit Youth Choir, um, they won. He, uh, Lavelle Nero is their manager, and they won their second stellar. And uh, wow. that would be Lavelle Nero as a manager. Um, his, one of his people, uh, he's had three people to walk up to the stage. Well, two people, one, one person walked up twice. Um, so he um, has uh, guided three, you know, guided them to three stellar awards. And we want to say congratulations to that camp. Uh, and it, it was just Detroit's finest. Detroit's finest. We were sitting across from each other and we were both rooting for each other um, just to make sure that that uh, God was there. And we just knew that God was going to carry us safely, safely through. And he did. And he did. Amen. Roxy, yeah. girl, I felt like it was I felt like I was in Phoenix. <laughs> you didn't I, feel the heat. Felt like I was in Phoenix because I was outside. If y'all notice, I was in the car, so I was outside. 
Yeah, yeah. 115. So, yes, to everybody. Wilma was there. The beautiful, we'll call her the beautiful Wilma yeah. Nichols uh, was there in the house. Uh, Richard was taking pictures. I looked up. Richard was on stage and said, I'm getting my reward. <laughs> And I was like, okay, Richard, do what you need to do. Do the, do what you need to do. It was just a beautiful, beautiful evening for everybody. And the whole weekend, we're going to have some pictures for you um, on tomorrow uh, so that, uh, yeah. And hey, Sandra Busby, we, we're going to have some pictures for you on tomorrow uh, so that you can see some of the things that we saw while we were away. Um, in Sarah, how many years? Have, how, how old is the show? 38. No, no. Yeah. Sandy Rose show. Since um, October the 22nd, 2018. Oh, so we're going on five years. That was our first show. All right. Yep, 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 yep. So we want to say thank you to everybody. I mean, you guys uh, and and Richard, Richard just represented. We we will never forget <laughs> forget Richard. Amen. He represented. Amen. I went on the red carpet. We just over there, you know, like smile <laughs> to the left, smile to the right. I looked up. I said, Richard. Richard had his camera, honey. He was like. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's he was, what I do, away. sister girl. Yeah, he was snapping, snapping away. So we want to just, uh, just thank you, Donald Weber. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. If I really, really started calling names, I would be calling names all day. But it's okay. Yeah, I'll call names. Um, it's it's okay, but I just don't want to forget anybody. But uh, it's it's the folks like Donald Weber and and Miss Catherine and Roxy, and they come on every single. Lena, she's on when she's not at work. She's on. Uh, my little niece that comes on. Uh, we just want to yeah. thank her uh, for all that she does. She shares this show across the land and country. Every Baptist person. <laughs> Okay. Every Baptist person when they come on, honey, she is she is sharing, and she's like, Auntie, you know, I'm gonna share your show. I'm gonna share. So we are we are just indeed indeed grateful grateful for everything. Uh, Pastor Paul, uh, Paul Parker, we thank you, and for all of you guys who have given us music. Uh, that we could play like like the song that we just heard from uh, from Sister Catherine, Dr. Catherine and um, Quincy Field and Jr. Uh, we we just thank you. Thank you for making that music. Keep making that good old music. And we're going to keep playing it. Trust me, we're going to keep playing that music. Uh, we will keep playing it. He said it was streaky weather. Child, I was going to keep my clothes on. As <laughs> yep. And I also um, want to give a, a congratulations and a thanks to my cohort, uh, who are the other owners for, for WVTC Gospel Network, which is Frank Morris and uh, Reverend Quincy James. They are just... Uh, men of excellence and uh we we just we love them we love them they're there in chicago and we wouldn't do anything without them and uh so we we love them we are thankful also for ramon perry because it had it not been for ramon perry i would not even be on this station yeah. Um, so uh, we thank him for that because it was me going to his show that 
got me to be an owner of the station and then for me to be an owner of WVTC Detroit. So we thank God Amen. for everything that he is doing, for the new shows that are coming on, for all of that, and for you just just wonderful, wonderful listeners. And yes, Wilma, that is, it is an amazing accomplishment. In five years, five years, we got two stellar awards. And we started doing this and did not really know what, you know, couldn't say for sure. We knew what we were doing. But we uh, flew the plane while we were building it. So, uh, and we are still flying <laughs> and yeah. yet building. Uh, we, are, we are doing what, what is dictated by the, the people who watch the show. And Michelle Pryor, again, I want to thank you. Uh, that is my little niece. And like I said, she will share 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 she shares it to like five thousand people <laughs> okay <laughs> so we want to thank you michelle Pryor. uh you know you're a great great supporter of this mm -hmm. show and this network we want to thank you um yeah they said that richard nichols is one of our hollywood photographers oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, like we didn't know oh, that's my yeah. sister cynthia busby she's the public Publicist for our to guest today. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. And okay. uh yeah, we we appreciate Richard. Like I said, I got as soon as I got in, first face I saw I, Richard. And he was like, <laughs> snap, snap. So did you get some good pictures, Richard? <laughs> did you get good pictures? I did not. So I will not be showing my pictures. It's I did not. Is it I'm just messing. I'm just messing with you, girl. Don't look for anything. No, right, I got some good shots. And, and I, um, one of the highlights was on the red, not the red carpet, back in the press room. You know, after everyone wins or something, they bring some of the celebrities in the back, and I got a chance to get Thai tribute. Tasha Cobb, Ma, Marvin Sepp, Kirk Franklin, Travis Green, and Pastor Mike Jake uh, Jr. All in one shot. So okay. that, was, that right. was a great, they call that the money shot. <laughs> okay. All right. And we're going to see if we can get some of those uh, guys. We did collect some phone numbers and all of that. So we're going to yes. see if we can get some of those uh people on to the show um so that you guys can meet them up close and personal well cynthia busby i'm not mad at you here <laughs> i am not mad at you i right, let's go for that let's go for that um and we also want to say congratulations um i saw tasha the three ladies that were on the show on tuesday yeah. Um, and the first one that I saw was Tasha and she just beautiful, beautiful in person. Yes. And we got pictures, you guys, I'm going to put the pictures to some music and we'll watch them tomorrow. Um, and also we saw Jennifer Jackson and yes. Jennifer Jackson, as you guys know, was the vice president of the Stellars. Um, and she was talking about how the hard work and how she wasn't going to shirk her responsibility. And she comes to work on time and puts it in. Well, she got a promotion right in front of all of us. And she is now, I believe, the president of the Stellars now. Yeah, I wow. think she's the president of the yeah, yeah. Look at her. Brother John, he's going to get married, so he's going to step down a little bit, huh? Yeah, he's passing the baton on, and I was so proud of her. Um, I think it was just like they had called my name. I was like, girl, no, you didn't get that promotion in our face. Go <laughs> yes. ahead. Go ahead. This is a good, good year. So uh, she got a promotion. She is no longer the vice president. So the next time that we have her on the show, we will be calling her Madam President. Amen. Yeah. And yeah. So it's just beautiful. Just beautiful. Evie, you know we love you out there. We we love you. We love you. Um, and we're we're gonna have to continue this tomorrow because it's just so much in this weekend, but we 
I we we have a guest. We have a guest. Amen. We want to make sure that we bring our guest on. But prior to that, um, I just have by way of announcement. So you guys get the go ahead and get the video together. I mean the uh, bio together. Um, and by way of announcements, we want to uh, announce that. Uh, Sister Mary Abraham, as we all know, she went home to be with the Lord. And uh, that's from Lord, I know you've been so good and all of that St. James. Um, and they are calling all past and present choir members who sang with or would like to sing on July 29th, which is this Saturday, I believe. Uh, is this Saturday? No, this is the next Saturday, all right? And uh, her homegoing services, the attire, the ladies are wearing all black. The men will be in black suits and white shirts. And it's going to be at People's Baptist Church, 3000 MacDougal Street in Detroit, Michigan. The funeral, at, well, the family hour is at 10 and the homegoing is at 11. Also, um, it is aches my heart uh, to uh, say that uh, Brother Turner Hughes, Minister Turner Hughes, uh, has gone home to be with the Lord. And I've known him since I think I was about six years old. Wow. Six years old. And he was shouting when I met him. And <laughs> when I went to the hospital to see him. He was still shouting in the hospital. So mm -hmm. um, he shouting over in glory now. Uh, so we want to send our condolences, especially to the Detroit chapter uh, and all of those people, it, it, really the city of Detroit, because he worked at, I think, just about every church in the city of Detroit. At some point, he has sang at the pulpit uh, in the city of Detroit. So we want to say uh, good night to Turner. We're going to play one of his songs later on in the show, um, but we'll give you more information about the home going service as it gets closer. Um, also, we want to say congratulations to uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson, who uh, is retiring from, who retired from Rainbow Push. And we also want to say congratulations to Dr. Freddie Haynes. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Wow. Is the new CEO. Wow. Uh, the rainbow push. So we good see a whole different a whole different thing going on. So it's it's going to be marvelous in our eyes. All right. All right. The bio. All right. All right. The bio. It is our pleasure to introduce uh, Raven Kelly Dinwoody. She is a talented wife, mother, UCLA Bruin, producer, and actress who grew up on television and in movie theaters. At a young age, she portrayed Samuel L. Jackson's daughter, who was brutally raped by white supremacists in A Time to Kill. She was Whoopi Goldberg's terrified daughter of slain civil rights leader Megar Evers in Ghosts of Mississippi. She is a recipient of the NAACP Theater Award for Best Lead Actress and was the first Black child actress on Roseanne and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But perhaps you might remember her best for her breakout performance as young Tina Turner in What's Love Got to Do With It. She is a goddaughter of late civil rights activist and act, uh, actress Yolanda King. Reverend uh, uh, Martin Luther King's oldest daughter. And Raven has sung with many people such as Nick, uh, Natalie Cole, Kirk Franklin, Shaka Khan, Lisa Marie Presley, and even done duets with Stevie Wonder. And her voice has graced the stages from the Hollywood Bowl to the Grand Old Opry. Raven is currently in development on several film and television projects through her production company, Everlasting Entertainment. This includes two Christmas films through a partnership with the production company of Bonded Media, Buffalo 8, and is planned for 2024 release. Her company will advocate for current and former child performers 
and all its productions will feature at least one former childhood star, both from in front of the camera and behind the camera. So it's paying it forward. So we appreciate that. So uh, we want to welcome to the show Raven Kelly, Din Woody. Welcome. All right, we are so so excited to have her with us. It's just such a joy, um, and we're going to play a clip, and uh, we're going to bring her on with us. I mean, she's just such a joy, just such a joy. So I'm just proud. If I was going to have somebody to come on today to follow up that Stella win, I'd like for it to be her. So Amen. we will be right back. We're going to ask you to watch this clip. Many of you will remember it i think it was from 1993 uh 1993 so uh she's a little older now but pay attention to this clip we'll be right back this is the sandy rose show right here on wvtc detroit and blues shouting in here. Ain't the 4th of July picnic and you ain't singing with Mr. Bootsy Whitelaw and his slide trombone. Show the Lord a little more respect. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Uh, bright light from Bright Light. Bright light, my little light, I'm gonna let it shine. Bright light, my little light, I'm gonna let it shine. My bright light, little light, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it <laughs> oh my my <laughs> oh my god if you didn't if you didn't get a smile from that you something is wrong because so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was funny to me amen amen welcome raven we are so glad to thank have you, you. As thank you on the show. thank you all so much for having me thank you i feel so blessed to be here and congratulations miss sandy rose yay you. yes. on your on your wonderful congratulations on your wonderful seller award i actually when you you all were talking so much about the seller awards i said i have to tell them i would be remiss if i didn't tell you i actually made history at the seller awards Okay. I was, I was the youngest black child actor to pre ever perform on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry, mm -hmm. and that was at the Stellar Awards. And I sang with um, Dottie Peebles and Kirk Franklin and um, the Kirk Carr Singers and Vicki Winans and Cece and BB Winans when I was a little girl. So um, I have a deep love in my heart for the Stellar Awards. It holds a special place to me. And I just wanted to tell you congratulations 
on your award on your award you are such a phenomenal woman we need more women in radio making a stance mm-hmm. for black women and stand up for Jesus and for God and for all things holy. And it's a blessing to be on your show. Thank you all so much for having me here. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much. That was so <laughs> very kind of you. That was so very kind of you. And and it was good that we remember, you know, uh, some of the things that you have done earlier in your career. Uh, again, that that movie, What's Love, got to do with it. I think I don't know if I know anybody that did not see that movie. I don't know. If they, if they didn't see it, they're not telling it. It's one of those and iconic films. It's, such, it. it's been such a blessing um, over my career to be a part of so many, um, you know, iconic films like A Time to Kill and also Ghost of Mississippi. Um, but definitely what's all got to do with it holds a special place. And with the recent passing of Miss Tina, it's such an honor for me to um, pay tribute to her and honor her memory. I've been doing different tribute in interviews such as this and uh, the producers of the Broadway musical just had the opening the Los Angeles premiere in Los Angeles on Hollywood and they wanted me to go there um, for the red carpet to honor her and so um, they contacted um, my publicist and I was there and it's such a blessing and I just want to say it's so, so wonderful to be on your show here and one of the people that was able to make that possible the key person involved with that is my excellent publicist Miss Cynthia Busby. Excellent. excellent. Yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. She is she is she is stellar speaking of stellar. Cynthia Busby yeah. is a stellar publicist. <laughs> so if you all need to reach me um she's at uh Busby Promotions that's with the s Busby Promotions at aol.com. All right. Well, we shout out to Cynthia Busby. Um, She is on with us today and she is participating. She is is all there. She's all in. And um, I like to see when people are if they are representing you, they are really, really there with you and holding your hand and and walking right along with you. Um, Going back to that that role of Tina Turner. How did you get how did you get any of the roles uh, as a child? Um, I mean, you know, were you uh, 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 how did you get those roles? Well, as an actress, um, when you're in the industry, there's typically about four different ways that you can get a role. Uh, So number one, you can audition via tape for a role um, and you could also audition in person. Um, Well, nowadays it's not tape, it's, you know, the internet, you know, virtual interview. So a virtual interview is what they would call it today, um, auditioning in person, or you can have the role actually, you know, be written for you. Um, And then the last is, is that they can offer you a role. So with what's up got to do with it, if you're curious about me playing young Tina Turner, I actually, that was a virtual, they would call that virtual today, but this was way back in the VHS times before DVDs <laughs> and, you know, dot com. So I, um, my, I, my parents put together a, um, a audition tape of me singing this little light of mine and also the Jim Jam Jump. It's a song, an old school, an old juke joint song that was performed by uh, Cab Calloway a lot. So okay. I sing the Jim Jam Jump. The gym jam jump is a solid job. Makes you nine foot tall when you're four foot five. I sang that song when I was little. And I sang this little light of mine, praising the Lord. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So I sang that. Uh, and that was actually my first time singing. I had never sang before. Wow. A lot of people think, oh, she must have been in a youth choir. She was a little soloist. They called on her at church to sing. Absolutely not. I had never wow. sang before. I was terrified, actually. I was shaking like a leaf. And it was uh, Tina Turner herself and our musical director, Dan Carlin. And one of my, I, I was blessed to grow up with four godmothers. And uh, two of my main godmothers um, was uh, Yolanda King, who you just spoke about, rest wow. her soul in heaven. And Also, the wonderful Billy Barnum, Billy Barnum Crotty. She was a vocal contractor. And so anytime you needed, anytime movies or directors needed 
um, a gospel choir or a, a vocal group to sing in movies, they would call upon her to hire. So she's actually standing in that front row of that choir scene. She's all the way to the side uh, in a blue dress in the front row. That's my godmother, Billy. So godmother, Billy Barnum, Crotty, she and Tina Turner, and they taught me how to sing. I had never sang before. And so wow. I just have so much reverence and respect for the memory of Miss Tina and also my godmother Billy. I just lost her in February, this past February. Oh, no. um, and so she, she sang with Pink Floyd and the Beach Boys and Nat King Cole. Um, and so, and Frank Sinatra and his daughter Nancy Sinatra. So there's a, I wouldn't have been what I was. I would not have become the vocalist that I had not, that I had become to be at the Stellar Awards, to be singing at the Image Awards even years later if it had not been for my godmother, Billy, and also Miss Tina, um, teaching well, what, me to sing. What, re what relation is Billy, was Billy to HB? They, they, they were related? Yes, that's his sister. Yes, that's his okay. sister. That's okay. my uncle HB, HB Barnum. He wrote that famous song uh, that, that children sing, you know, the whole peanut, peanut butter, and jelly, that little song. He wrote that, and he wrote several songs for Yeah, um, and he was uh, uh, one of Aretha's MDs. Yeah. And he was Aretha Franklin's musical director MD. for over 25 years. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So, and I um, actually learned to sing a lot, Miss Sandy, on his choir, Life Choir. Good. And so now you said that Yolanda King was your godmother. Now, a lot of people didn't know that she was uh, an actress. Yes, that's right. A lot of people think of her and they think of, oh, she's a civil rights activist daughter. And she's also uh, a prominent civil rights activist in her own right. But she's actually a phenomenal award winning actress as well. And she's a jack yeah. of many trades, um, also a public speaker a very prominent youth advocate as well, and HIV AIDS activist as well as um, a Christian uh, Bible study leader as well. So uh, Aunt Yolanda wore many hats and I really miss my Auntie Yoki. She passed away when I was in college at UCLA. And, oh, okay. um, you know, she passed away from a massive heart, of, heart attack um, in Malibu, California at my Uncle Dexter's house, her brother's house. Hmm. And that was very traumatic for me. And, um, I just, I miss her very dearly. And not a lot of people realize this though, but we traveled in a play together um, called Achieving the Dream. And it was her, her story about being an, the child of a civil rights activist and balancing hmm. that and being his daughter and traveling around what it's like being, you know, an entertainer and an actress while balancing a speaking schedule, being the daughter of an icon, a civil rights icon. And so the play is called uh, achieving the dream and I was it was a one woman show but I did the musical portion of the show um, and did all the musical excerpts in between her acting and um, it was such a wow. beautiful blessing to do that show with her and we were nominated for NAACP theater awards and our show won as well so we were very blessed by that by the image awards and um, I, I won actually a few years later uh, best actress best lead actress for Turpentine Jake as well for the um, Image Awards. So that was a blessing as well. Hey, but I love my Auntie Yolanda. We also starred in a movie together with Danny Glover and Wesley Snipes and Jasmine Guy. Those of you that are different, a different world fans, Whitley, right, right. that's Jasmine Guy. Um, and uh, it's called The Boy Who Painted Christ Black, directed by the legendary Bill Duke. So um, we, we did a lot of films together. She also, you mentioned um, Ghost of Mississippi. Uh, that is the film that I did about the slain civil rights leader, Medgar Evers, who was yes. brutally um, assassinated in his front lawn in front of his family. He died mm -hmm. in his wife, Merle Evers' arms and in front of their children. I played his oldest mm -hmm. daughter in the movie, um, Rena Evers. And if you watch the movie, when you see the beginning, it's me playing Rena Evers. And as the character grows up, guess who plays Rena Evers? Auntie Yolanda, Yolanda King. So we shared oh, that. All right. Shared that wow. Together. So that was extra special. Wow. We have a we do have a question from the audience, and uh, Donna wants to know how does the real world feel to someone who's always been a star in movies and the stage. Um. Let's see. The real world. See, and see if, that, that I have to tell you 
Uh, Mr. Donald Weber, let me tell you, Mr. Donald, everybody's going to answer that question differently. Every yeah, artist you yeah, have, because yeah. some of them are going to say, oh, it's totally different. But for me, I don't know anything else, Mr. Donald. Right. I grew up in it. Like literally my first job was a Huggies commercial. I was the first black baby to do uh, Huggies commercials back in the late 80s. So wow. I don't know anything different. So for me, the real world is Hollywood. This is all I know. I, I learned to read on the set of I'll Fly Away, my first television series with um, Regina Taylor and Sam Waterston. And Samuel L. Jackson played my dad twice, actually. He played my dad on I'll Fly Away and also in A Time to Kill. Um, but I learned how to read from movie scripts when I was four years old. My, I have a five-year-old son now, and I have a 10-month-old uh, baby. Um, actually, he's 11 months now. That's right. Time goes by so fast. Um, but um, yes, I grew up on movie sets. So for me, I guess other people's, you know, glitz and glamour for me is my norm. So that's right. Yeah. That's your that's your real life. So what, yes. what, what was what, what was it about you as a as a child that uh, made your parents think, OK, she can make it uh, in show business? What was it about you that they were looking at? I would have to say, first off, my mother had a very strong background in, um, in you know, the theater world and performing arts. She had multiple degrees um, and had studied at South Carolina State, go Bulldogs, um, down in um, Orangeburg, Columbia, um, South Carolina area. And she attended college there and um, University of Alabama at Birmingham, as well as um, courses at Juilliard. And so with that background, I grew up seeing her perform and I would try to mimic her and stuff. But prior to that, even before I could walk, uh, I did like baby modeling for some of my mom's friends. Um, my parents had friends that had little, um, you know, children's boutiques that they owned. And then that led to me, you know, modeling for Riches and Macy's. And if anybody remembers Kids R Us, um, you know, if there was Toys R Us, then Kids R Us was a clothing store. So I model for them. I model for Limited 2, Nordstrom's, lots of different places. So um, I just enjoyed performing. And I think they saw that. And I was very blessed that they nurtured that and made sure that I grew up with not only a, a good foundation in the performing arts, but also they made sure that I had a very solid foundation in my Christian walk. And I wanted to touch on that, um, especially with the nature of your show, um, Miss Sandy, because I just got finished taking my son to his, this is my five-year-old son. I just got finished last week taking him to his 10th BBS, his 10th vacation Bible school. And I grew up going to vacation Bible school every year, e even when I had movies in the summer. E the ones that were crazy busy summers, I would only go to one. But if I didn't have a movie, I went to at least three vacation Bible schools when I was younger. And then I grew uh, up to be a counselor in training. So and then I ran my own vacation Bible schools. So I love the Lord. <laughs> what did, what did that do for you? Because, you know, so many people, um, I got a friend that's, that's doing, uh, participating with the Vacation Bible School has been for the past couple of weeks. Um, what did Vacation Bible School do for you? Oh, my gosh. <sighs> I can't even I put know, it in I words. Love it. I, I just love, love it. I, warm BBS cookies, is an addiction. The warm milk. The <laughs> I'm cookies. addicted to vacation. I love the popsicle my school. husband's like, my husband's like, you know, most people just put their kids in one vacation Bible school, right? <laughs> and I said, I know, but I'm not most people. So my son goes to like at least like four every summer, and I love it. And then I volunteered at least two of them. Um, permitting my schedule with filming or performing. And I just have a blast with it, honestly. Um, I think the most important thing for me that I value is just being with the kids because I'm a big kid myself. I'm a child at heart always. And I just love the whole, the leadership of it. Um, guiding young minds, you know, bring up a child in the way That's that they right. should do. And when they That's are right. old, they will not stray from it. Amen. That's and right. just also bringing confidence out of children as well. I know that a lot of times, you know, people tend to want to work with, you know, seven to 10 year olds, or they want to work with kids that are more so high school. But my favorite ages to teach are preschool 
and <laughs> um, and middle schoolers. And a lot of people say, why the babies? And and then those you know raging hormones of the preteens, because when they're preschoolers, they're learning about the world around them. You know, their little minds are just forming. You're teaching them little simple things like this is short, this is tall, you know, this is soft, this is hard. And they're learning about the world around them and they're little sponges. And then when they're middle school, I love that age because they know about the world by then. They know about the world, but they're finding out who am I? What spiritual mm -hmm. gifts has the Lord blessed me with? Am I athletic? Am I more into science? Am I both? Am I more artistic? Am I an artist and a scientist? And they're finding their voice and you're shaping, helping shape their character and helping them find their spiritual gifts. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. You're also teaching them about things like abstinence and um, you know, saying no to drugs and making wise choices and positive peer pressure versus the negative. You know, And I think that that is so crucial. And I just love catching them right at that crucial age because I feel like then we can channel them into greatness for leadership later. And I, I love to do that also in my acting classes. I teach acting as well. And I do that and I involve faith in there as well. And um, I have two Christmas movies coming out, by the way, that you talked about. And in those Christian movies, we have children in the movies and we talk about the importance of, you know, God. And, you know, you got to keep the Christ in Christmas. Amen. 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 We are very big about that. Um, and so um, I just I just love vacation Bible school and having that footing when when you're in the entertainment industry, there's a lot of highs and lows. It's a roller coaster. And to have that Christian foundation as your um, basically as your center, as your core guide, it gives you a sense of security, humility and reverence for God. And also patience, because a lot of times in acting and in filmmaking, it takes patience to get projects made. You know, one of the Christian movies we have coming out, uh, both of them are actually starring myself and Tatiana Ali. Um, and so um, we have United Christmas and Christmas Kennel. Christmas Kennel is a wonderful film about a little boy and his dog at Christmas and his parents dealing with the highs and lows of their marriage and trying to find their romance and find faith back in their marriage. And our other film, United Christmas, is talking about how we are all one in the body of Christ. You know, there's enough of this division, you know, going on in the world. You know, we, we and, and even in our churches, we have people, oh, well, we're Baptists. We're better than the AME. Founded and, you know, by the oh, father of gospel music. Oops. So. We're non-denominational. And so we're better than the Methodists, you know, and no, nobody's any better than anybody else. You know, all those denominations need to work together. And, and additionally, we need to reach out to our brothers and sisters as well that are that are Jewish, our brothers and sisters that are Muslim, our brothers and sisters that are atheists and bring them and invite them to church. That is our job as Christians is to spread God's light to everybody. And so in, in a United Christmas, we actually have these beautiful scenes where we celebrate Christmas and Hanukkah. And then we also celebrate Kwanzaa. And we talk about the importance of Black Jesus in the Black Christian culture as well. Um, so it's a really beautiful film. And I think that getting back to your question about, you know, vacation Bible school and youth, when we chose these films to make, we decided that we wanted to have special screenings in churches with their youth ministries so that it can bring more children to Christ, more teenagers to Christ. We got to catch them young and get them into Jesus early because that is the way to go. Yeah. Well, so, you know, what I, I, I what I appreciate about you is that uh, you are not ashamed, you know, of your faith. Thank uh, you. And we need more Christians in this industry because they just turned that thing completely around. You remember a long time ago when it was a joy and, a, and a, an honor to play in those films like the Ten Commandments. You know what I'm saying? But now yes. it's, they, they, don't even, they, yes. they don't even they don't even bleep out those certain um, words. words now. Yes. Yes, but they don't, certain ones that that uh, defame God, they they don't even bleep that out anymore. So uh, uh, Hollywood is, you know, taking a, a real turn. We need so to have thank more faith based faith based films out there. And our production company is is actually focused on 
female driven projects as well as Christian faith based projects. And we also reach out to bring the marginalized to God as well. You know, a lot of people feel as though, oh, well, you know, once you're saved and, you know, you, you've got a job, whatever, you know, you're great. You're doing well. We make money. We get our off offering. We tie to our churches. And, you know, they think an issue of the homeless is only necessary at, you know, the holidays. Are we going to deal right. with the homeless mm -hmm. at Thanksgiving and go and volunteer at the soup kitchen and give out, mm -hmm. you know, toys for tots, give some gifts then? People are homeless all year round. Oh, you're long. All year mm -hmm. round, they need us. You know, and so we're very big about giving back to people of all ethnicities, you know, and, and myself being in an interracial marriage as well. My husband is Irish and Italian and Scottish. And so we're very big about bringing all people together for the, for the greater good of God, you know, Asians, um, you know, Middle Easterns, black people, white people, Latinos, straight people, gay, the LGBTQ plus movement. Yes, you can love the Lord and you can be queer. The Lord loves all people. You know, even if you have a different opinion, that's fine, but Jesus loves all. And so we're big about bringing God to even everybody around the world even you know people that are in different industries we want to reach out people say oh well i don't want to deal with him because he used to be a drug dealer oh well she used to be a prostitute don't you remember in scripture the lord went to those that were the least of these he went to those that didn't have money he washed the feet of prostitutes in scripture and so we want to reach out to everybody the darkest corners of our society we want to bring them into god's light Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And Amen. Um, we're going to go on a break, but we have so many more questions for you. So many <laughs> more questions um, because we need to get some answers uh, because we don't, you know, we're not in Hollywood. We don't uh, see all of this, but you're right there. You, you were born there. We want to know how your parents got you uh, involved. Uh, we want to know, we want to know so much. We yes, ma'am. So well, thank you. Um, so we will, we're going to take a little break right here. And uh, so we can pay a few bills and we will be back <laughs> right after this. We're here with Raven Kelly and who is really uh, widely known for her role as young Tina. We want to know some more about Tina, too. All right. So we'll be right back after this. Founded by the father of gospel music, Thomas A. Dorsey, National Convention of Gospel Choir and Choruses is coming to New Orleans for its 90th anniversary. It's for anyone interested in the gospel, especially through music. Music. This week-long event includes daily classes, workshops, and convention-wide plenary sessions featuring Pastor Donnie McClurkin, Bishop Hezekiah Walker, along with speakers, preaching, a black tie gala, luncheons, nightly concerts, health fair, day of community service. Circle the dates of July 29th through August 4th. Get registered online by searching for 2023 NCGCC. Come on, write it down. Search for 2023 NCGCC. Now, amongst the many events, join in with the New Orleans Metropolitan Union Chorus hosting New Orleans Night on Monday, July 31st at 7 p.m. at the Sheraton New Orleans Hotel with special guests, Pastor Dale J. Sanders Sr. and Pastor Tyrone Jefferson and the Tab Mass Choir. Musical tickets are available now from any union member to include President Cordell Chamberlain, Val B. Williams, Troy Coleman, Robert Pate Jr. Get $20 tickets at True Vine Baptist Church on these select dates, July 8th, 15th, and 20th. Second, but only from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. I don't know about sunlight, the dark cloud, the beam shine. The precious do
to fall But then I'm so glad that Jesus All right, that was none other than the late, great Turner Hughes and his background. He had some bomb background there. That was the Craig brothers, uh, uh, Bishop Charles Craig, Bishop James Craig, Thomas Whitfield, and I think it was Ronnie Kersey in there too. So uh, just so much, so much talent uh, and so much anointing. And he knows it all. He knows it all. And and I'm so glad. That's one thing I'm glad about. Cause I don't. Uh, and I'm so glad that whatever goes on, he knows it all. Amen. And uh yeah, omnipotent, omnipresent. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Um, and we we have to just know, and and we like songs that you can hear the words because it, it says I don't know how the the sparrows fly and they don't mm -hmm. fall. I don't know, but all I know is that Jesus knows it all. And uh, wow. out of the many voices, how he hears mine and he knows mine every time I call. I don't know why, but all I know is that Jesus knows it all. So uh, cool. we are back here with none other than Raven Kelly and who is just best known for her role as little Tina. Like I said, girl, we busted up. We was like, you better go ahead, Tina. And you had, did they tell you to do this? I was going to ask that. 
Yeah, did they? Uh, no, they did not. They did really? not tell me to do that. That was just the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, ma'am. But ironically oh, enough, Miss Tina said that she did that when she was little. So there you go. It was all, it's kismic. It's the Holy Spirit. It just worked itself out. Um, wow. But it's so funny uh, when you bring that up, it brings me back to uh, that moment when we filmed that scene that was supposed to be in Nutbush, Tennessee. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. Tina's from. That was actually, we filmed that scene at a church up in the northern parts of Sacramento, California. Uh, mm. is where we filmed and it was pouring raining that day actually so we had to wait we had to start filming and then stop start filming and then stop so we had to mm. do a lot because you know as you know Virginia Capers character the choir director she pulls me out by my ear so they didn't right. want it to be raining too hard out there you know right. so and actually she's a method actress and I'm not sure what? if because I mean Capers we've seen her remember. for years yeah yes, we've but, seen but her Virginia for Capers she actually the first black woman to star in her own show on Broadway on the Great White Way. She was the first. Oh one. wow! And and also she was Will Smith's um, grandmother for years on uh, Tatiana's show on Fresh Prince of Bel Air. She was Granny. Yeah. That's the same act. And so she came up to me and she said, "Baby, now I just have to let you know that Miss Virginia loved children, but I'm a method actor. So when I grab your ear, you gonna feel some pain, baby." Cause I'm gonna grab your ear for real. I want you to feel that energy. We are gonna do this for real. And I said, okay, yes, ma'am. And that was my first time learning what method acting was. And so she mm. taught me, and I actually do method acting as well. Um, and so she, she, when she grabbed my ear, just so everybody knows, that really did hurt. And we did it. In, we did it in two takes, and we were done. <laughs> we just went, uh, we're not gonna do this no whole bunch of times, Miss Capers. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, Raven, uh, did the church uh, resemble uh, the church in Nutbush uh, that you? Uh... Yes, it did. Okay, yes. okay. It resembled her actual childhood church. They searched actually all over, and uh, that was the church that they found that was more like an exact no. replica, as close as possible, that they found. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, um, your ear like probably a, still a hurts today. Pardon me? I said, Larry said, your ear probably still hurts today. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, indeed. I have to, wear, I have to be careful when I put in these heavy earrings. Yes, Mr. Larry. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Capers look like she didn't play with. Oh, no, my goodness. no, but it was it was a blessing. And when you watch the film, there's several little things I should share with you. Um, that first scene, you'll see when the camera is panning into the church, you'll see a little boy outside the church throwing rocks. There was a scene that was cut from the movie. And it, one of the things that Tina was famous for was racing all the little boys in town. That's how she got those beautiful, long, sculpturous legs. Because she's been racing all the little boys outside of church wow. before a choir practice for years. And the actor playing that little boy outside the church is none other than my friend, Brandon Hammond. And he was the little boy from the movie Soul Food. He's remember on the little boy, he's on the show. Yes. He's on the show. Yes, yeah. I love my Brandon. Yes, yes, yes. That's where we met. Yes, little known fact. That's right. Hi, Brandon. <laughs> so Brandon Hammond um, and I, we actually met on the set of What's Love Got to Do With It. So that's my brother from another mother. I love him dearly. We grew up together. Yeah, and um, actually, Brandon and I, went to my, you don't we went to junior him. prom together. Brandon was my junior prom date. Okay. Wow. Amen. Oh, Amen. Yes, so now right. did you guys did you guys get an opportunity to meet Tina Turner? Yes, I did. Um actually that was the first concert I ever went to. I was eight years old. I was turning eight the uh summer. The movie came out in, in uh June of 1993, and my birthday was uh, is June 28th. So the movie was coming out when I had my birthday. And it was awesome. Um, another film that was coming out at the time was Sleepless in Seattle. So if you remember that movie with Tom Hanks and Med Ra Meg Ryan, there was a little boy in that movie. She had a son. And so uh, Entertainment Tonight had um, Ross Malinger, that's a little boy from Sleepless in Seattle, and myself, I had What's Love Got to Do With It coming out. And they took us on a huge press tour, Entertainment Tonight. And I was on Regis and Kathy Lee. 
Um, and they took me out and took us to Planet Hollywood in, in Manhattan. And then they took us to the huge FEO Schwartz uh, toy store and gave us a shopping spree. So that was like the best birthday ever. I remember that. And so after that, they surprised me after the shopping spree. And they said, Disney wants to give you a special surprise. And they gave me tickets, um, front row seats to the concert. But I had no idea what I was getting into because I'm eight years old. I'm a baby. I don't know. Yeah, you know? yeah. So we go to the concert, me and my mom, they take us backstage and they're like, you're going to meet her. You're going to meet her. And I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. I had listened to all her songs. And this was after I already did the movie. So I met her after. And I met her during when we were doing the vocal part, but I met her all zhuzhed up. You know what I mean? After the movie, you know, with the heels and the hair and all that. And she takes me backstage and she says, you see those heels over there? And I said, yes. She says, those are my diva heels. Those are when I turn into Tina. And she was very regal and very refined. A lot of people think of her as this wild, you know, rock and roll. Yes, she was the queen of rock and roll, but behind closed doors, very regal, very sweet. And I just, I loved her energy and her vibe with me. And I know her boys grew up with such a loving mom because she had a kid side to her too. Like I remember special memories of her uh, sitting me on her lap and us playing around with her makeup and playing dress up and her letting me try on her diva stilettos, you know? Ooh. So we had a lot of fun together. <laughs> um, but I had no idea, Miss Sandy, what I was getting myself into. No, until I'm sure you did. I, they turned the corner. I said bye to her. I was backstage dancing with her and her dance, um, her backup dancers. And they, they said, all right, give her a hug. We got to go. They got to do the show. And I turned the corner and they opened the stadium doors. And I just heard this, this loud roar of the crowd chanting, Tina, Tina, Tina. And I was just like, I was awestruck. I just okay. didn't know. I was completely dumbfounded. And I said, wow, this wasn't like a large, you know, auditorium. This was a no. huge stadium in Atlanta, like about the size of a football field with everyone mm -hmm. chanting her name. And I said, this is kind of a big deal. This is this yeah. is this is I'm playing a legend. That's when I really grasped the seriousness of what I had just, you know, built. Yeah, yeah, that that's really something. Um, so now if you had to describe Tina in a word, I know you said she was regal. Um, yes. what would you say that she was? I would say empowerment. If I had to pick one word, it would definitely yeah. be empowerment. I mean, other words come to mind as well, like, you know, obviously classy. Um, another word that comes to mind is resilient, there you, you know, but I would have to say for sure, you know, although there's resilience and there's talent and she had her faith in God as well, um, I would also have to say it was really empowerment. She was big on that. And even at a little... Uh, uh, as a little girl at the age of eight, she pulled me aside and told me backstage. She made sure to tell me, Raven, you, she said, Raven, my love. That's what she used to call me. Raven, my love. You make sure when you grow up, you never let anybody lay hands on you. You don't let anybody touch you inappropriately. Never. You never stand for that. You know, that was important for her to instill that in me. And it stuck with me for years. And, um, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't say this on your show. And I want to announce this for all of your viewers that are watching and listening. Um, on behalf of Miss Tina's memory, I want to pay due respect to her and help your viewers, anybody that's listening or that has family members that may be, um, I won't say victims, but survivors, survivors of domestic violence. Um, please make sure that you call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Their number is one 800 799-7233. Again, that's 1-800-799-7233. And I want to make sure that um, I honor Ms. Tina by continuing her legacy of spreading um, awareness about domestic violence prevention. Hey Amen. That's beautiful. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. Thank you. Because we all need to stand for something. And you knew when you saw Tina Turner just like you said, there was empowerment. Um, yes, there was something that she that were that was resilience that you saw. Yes. 
Um, there was, you know, uh, just a presence, a lady. Refinement. Refinement. Yes. Refinement. Um, when you saw her interviews, it wasn't like uh, what you may have thought you saw on the stage. You're absolutely right. It was a different person when she would sit down with Oprah or when she would sit down with the, with the other yes, interviewers. And I was just so proud of her. I can remember when this movie came out, uh, we went over to uh, Europe. And, uh, you know, sometimes folks think, you know, all black folks know everybody. So <laughs> there was that, I came up and, and what's love got to do with it was on the marquee. Right. And he had just come out of the yes. show. He said, do you know, Tina, Tina Turner. We love <laughs> Tina. We lo I said, well, we love Tina too. <laughs> we love yes. Yeah. And it was, you know, <laughs> all around the world and you played a person who is known not just in uh, her hometown of Nutbush or uh, maybe uh, uh, just the city, uh, but she was known. Or even uh, just this country, you know, even just domestic. She wasn't domestic. She was an international. Around the world. Uh, around the yes. world. Superstar, and actually, um, it's interesting that you bring that up because I'm actually going to be doing a show next year uh, in Istanbul, in Turkey, um, paying homage to Miss Tina. So I will be uh, performing a monologue show with musical tributes to her as well. So um, now, do you would you sing on that? I'll be doing a show in Europe. Yes, I will be doing a show honoring Miss Tina next year, traveling around in different parts of Europe. But we're going to start off in Istanbul, Turkey, because I have uh, some family there. So we just definitely want to pay homage to her there. And then also doing some um, some shows in Frankfurt and Heidelberg, because, you, as you know, she lived in Germany for several years before she went to, to Zurich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got um, a couple questions from the audience, so we want to get these yes. in. Uh, Sandra wants to know, do you have aspirations of pursuing music? Yes, indeed, I do, actually. I will be, uh, Miss Sandra, I will actually be releasing a song. My first professional song, solo song, um, will be released. Um, it it's, will be released uh, this September. It's a tribute song to, about September 11th, actually that I wrote a week after the 9-11 attacks. Um, so I wrote that in high school actually. And um, I've just been crazy busy all these years and never had the time filming so much and college. And then, you know, after college working and doing more movies and then got married and had my two boys. And finally, like, I've got to get my song done. So yes, um, some music producers that we've partnered with um, are going to uh, do that with us. And we're very glad to see that happening. And so All it's right. a 9-11 tribute song. Okay. And we have another question from the audience. Larry wants to know, what would you say to a parent who has a child with the gift of acting? What are the first steps? Uh, number one, the first step is, I would say, is to make sure that your child is truly talented in that chosen field if that they are truly gifted and it's not just a passing fancy it can't be something like oh yeah i like i kind of like to dance and then you know next thing you know they get hired for a job and they say mommy i don't want to really dance anymore i kind of want to play soccer they have to really be invested in it yeah. you want to see signs look for sure signs that, that your child like they eat sleep and breathe acting you know, they just love it so much or they eat, sleep and breathe, you know, um, just like an athletic child would eat, sleep and breathe um, football or basketball. You want to make sure that you see those early signs that they're like, mommy, can you please take me to violin lessons? Can you take me to my acting class again? Can I go to hip hop today? You know, can I can I go to, to choir rehearsal? I, I know I'm in choir, but I really want to try out to, you know, be in the children's choir and be a vocalist and be a, you know, I want to be a soloist. Can I try out for the solo? I want to audition for that. You want to look for those signs to show that they really are engaged in it. Um, number two, I would say make sure that your child has a strong, strong foundation in the Lord. That is so key. Because as they enter the entertainment industry as a child, you can of, you know, 
They're hot one second and then they're not. They're hot again and then That's they're not. Right. And, and you got to deal with and that. And that does a lot to your spirit. That's going to do a lot to your child's spirit. One day they can't go to the grocery store because paparazzi snapping pictures of them. You know, they're getting in and out of limousines instead of school buses like I was as a child. And then maybe they don't work for two years. Are they putting all of their spiritual investment into show business? Are they, are they putting their identity into whether or not they do a movie or whether or not they book five commercials versus if they only book two? Oh, I only booked eight commercials this year. So then they feel, you know, they they feel down on themselves because they'd rather have booked two commercials and had three movies coming out. That, that has to be their hobby. Acting has to be their hobby. It cannot be their Holy Spirit. Acting has to be a hobby, Ooh. not their Holy Spirit. They cannot worship the industry. They cannot worship the money that they make from the industry. They cannot worship their agents. They can't do this. They cannot job. worship the directors. They have, there's one God, but God. Woo, Jesus. So you've got to have that as that foundation. And thirdly, I would say, um, you want to make sure that when you have your child in the industry, please, please be aware of the scammers out there. Sad mm. to say, but anytime any agent, somebody that calls themselves an agent or we're a modeling school, we're an acting school, and they're asking you for a crazy amount of money. Now, now, you know, you do need to pay for dance classes and acting lessons. Yes, you do pay for pay for those. Those are private sessions and you pay for that. However, if you have a manager or an agent that says, I need you to spend, you know, something astronomical like $800 or two grand on these photos for a photo shoot. And then if you're, if I'm going to represent your child, you need to pay me $500. No, you don't pay agents. You never cut a check. You never dig in your wallet and give cash. You don't swipe uh, your debit card. You don't tap that credit card for an agent or a manager ever. That's only for lessons in acting and modeling, singing, dance. Yes, you're going to pay for those, but not yes. for your representation. Okay, that's a red uh, flag. If they ask you for anything, how they get paid is when your child books a job, they get 10 to 15% if they're an agent or they get 15 to 20% if they're your manager of whatever your child makes. So they don't make wow. money until that your child you makes. did some. That's right. right. That's and right. last but not least, I would, I would be remiss if I didn't say that. Um, make sure that you set up um, for your child. In Los Angeles and in New York, in New York, it is the law to have a Coogan account, okay? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay? So yes. the Coogan account, is yeah. where a portion of the child's money is set aside until they're 18 years of age um, to receive all their monies so that they can use it towards college or to buy a home, put a down payment down or get a car, different things like that. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're being fiscally responsible with your child's earnings. You know, right. the Coogan account, the Coogan, Coogan law the allows you to spend a little bit of the money on the child to invest in things like private school or if the child is sick say they get in a car accident and they need surgery on their arm you can use some of that money towards medical things or for uh, scholastic things but the majority of that child's earnings needs to be set aside for them because they're the one that's doing that work and so it's mm -hmm. crucial and i'm an advocate for child actors and part of my work with my production company um everlasting entertainment all of you please visit everlasting ent.com it's entertainment for short everlastent.com that's our website a portion of the proceeds from all of our show shows and movies anything that we do all of our productions even our theatrical and musical productions a portion of the proceeds will go towards the ray of hope foundation <clears throat> and what we do is we create resources for former child actors OK, so former child actors that have instead of having a foundation, that's why I said foundation in the Lord, foundation in faith. A lot of them didn't grow up with that. And so they end up falling prey to alcohol addiction, drug addiction, sometimes even prostitution or even prostituting their spirit, their soul. You know, there's other forms of prostitution other than sexual. You know, and, and, the, and the devil, the devil is real and he's alive and he's out there and we need to protect 
our former child actors and also our current ones. And so the resources from our films will actually go to help them find housing, counseling services, AA wow. meetings, um, uh, Bible studies. That is what we do. It, we're not just about, oh, we're going to make some movies and be famous and walk the red carpet and shine and smile. That's not what we're about. We're about, yes, we are going to do all that fun stuff, but we're also going to do the foundation work that goes behind, behind all that and feed back into the community. And so if you're going to put your child in show business, like I said, number one, make sure that they're invested in their talent. Number two, make sure they have a foundation in, in Christ. You know, and if it, hopefully you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, make sure they are fed, rooted in faith in so, some way or form, in any other faith. They need to have something there, even if it's just spiritual and yoga. They need to have something that's going to be when when they hit, meet challenges and stressful times, they need to have something to fall back on so that they don't fall prey to uh, the devil and those things that are out there in the world. And number three, Amen. like I said, Sure, you are fiscally responsible and set aside money for your child for their future so that they can pay for their education. You know, that's so cru crucial to their development. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, my child is going to go off and be a millionaire and be an actress. He's going to be a rock star and sing in a band. They can still do all of that and still go to college as well. So make sure they mm -hmm. have that option available. You know, I, I went to UCLA. And I went to Mount St. Mary's College and Pierce College in, in California. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm actually a preschool musical director as my job job, you know, and I teach the little ones. I enjoy doing that. And that I love play? that. Yes, I actually I actually sing and work with children. And I, I'm a vocal coach for little children. I teach them to sing in Italian and Mandarin Chinese. I just got finished wow. working with a wonderful church. Uh, shout out to Journey Church in Columbia, South Carolina, um, and also Bethel AME Church in St. Matthew, South Carolina. That's my family church um, where my mother grew up. And we can trace our lineage back at that church, back to slavery times, Bethel AME. Wow. Um, so wow. shout out to Pastor Washington. But Journey Church um, in Columbia, South Carolina just hosted Freedom School there. And that's sponsored by the Children's Defense Fund. And they have these wonderful summer school programs where they make children fall in love with reading. And they also teach the gospel of Christ. And I had the wonderful blessing of teaching hip hop and ballet, musical theater. I had the baby singing uh, Erica Campbell's, I love God, you don't love God, what's wrong with you? I had him doing that <laughs> song. Um, and then they also sing in Chinese Mandarin as well. Um, and it was beautiful. We had a wonderful time. So you got to have that foundation, fiscal responsibility. And again, do not pay an agent or a manager directly. They get paid when you get paid. Amen. Amen. Wow. And we That's thank good. you for all of that information. And for those of you who may not know about the Coogan Law, that is something that came about. Uh, Jackie Coogan used Jackie to be Coogan. on the Little Rascals. And if you remember that, then you're mm -hmm. older than. And he ended up there. <laughs> his mother and stepfather spent all of his money. And yes. when he and something got. Something similar happened to me as well, unfortunately, sadly. Um, but the devil is a liar. I still persevere in life and I'm grateful to have faith. And I've learned through faith and counseling um, to overcome depression through also, you know, a lot of my um, emotional and financial abuse that I experienced as a child actor from my own situation. I've been able to be an advocate and speak up against all of that. And so I think that it's really crucial that we pay homage to Jackie Coogan with yeah. this. So I'm so happy yeah. that you that you brought that up. Um, Ms. Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our last break uh, before we go and then we'll go around and get a few closing thoughts and uh, we will be right back after this. You're you're here on the Sandy Rose show. You don't know who we going to get on this show. <laughs> All right, we've got Raven Kelly, and uh, she's just such a doll, and we thank God for her. Uh, right now, we're going to play Lemmy Battles, none other than uh, Lemmy Battles, 
all the way from Chicago. She, I think I heard her the loudest screaming in the audience at the Stellar Awards when they <laughs> did WBTC. She screamed louder than anybody in there. And so I'm going to play her song. We'll be right back. That was Nemi. I gotta come up with a name for her. I don't know if she's gonna be the auntie of gospel or what. She ain't gonna be. <laughs> we gonna we gotta come up with a name for her. The godmother of gospel soul. The godmother of gospel. Listen, there we go. <laughs> we gonna come up with something. That Lemmy battle, that Lemmy battle. I wouldn't trade her for nothing. I really would. We want to thank everybody for tuning in to today to the Sandy Rose Show. And uh, we have none other than uh, Raven Kelly, who is a producer, actor, uh, spiritual leader. Uh, <laughs> you can call it all because, I mean, listen. You are, and I saw some pictures on the internet, all the pictures that I saw of you. You had a Bible with you. This thing is real to you, huh? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it is. It's very real to me. Um, and one thing that I will say as well um, about my faith, whew, I've been through so many highs and lows to, in my 20s, um, you know, because, you know, I lived in Los Angeles, you know, and I'm actually, I'm actually a grit. You know, girls raised in the South. I'm actually, you know, originally I was born in Virginia and I was raised in Atlanta and California. So I call myself a Valley Belle. I'm part Valley girl and part Southern <laughs> Belle. 
So I'm a Valley Belle. But, um, you know, it, being a young lady in your 20s in this industry and then also, you know, living in L.A., Hollywood, you know, it's not cool. You know, it's not cool being a virgin. It's not. It's not cool in, uh, abstaining and waiting for marriage, you know. And I had my heart broken so many times, you know. I even had a, a gentleman that I dated one time tell me, well, you know, I wouldn't consider, you know, marrying somebody that I hadn't been with. That's like buying a car that you haven't test driven kind of thing. Right. And so, I mean, as far as everything went, as far as intellect and loving the Lord, he was a Christian, by the way. And he was a deacon that said that to me. So, you know, sometimes, you know, they come in all shapes and sizes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But see, you and got the he checked and you all got the boxes. The and right. <laughs> and he checked all the boxes except that last one. And I was just like, nope, can't do it. And I just said, I'm I'm sticking to this. And mm -hmm. I've been broken up with over and over and over. And so I came back um, to my, uh, my now husband. And I just knew he was going to break up with me. And I said, all right, Sean. I said, you know what? I just want to get this over with. I was going to wait till later to tell you when I knew you a little bit better. But we've been dating for a month now. And I'm just going to rip off the Band-Aid. This is what you're dealing with. I'm a virgin. Yeah. I'm waiting until marriage. This is that. So if you're going to break up with me, let's just do it now before I just start falling in love. And he was just like, I'm not going anywhere. Mm. And I was like, you don't want to break up with me? And tears, just tears rolling down my face. He said, I love you. He's like, good things come to those who wait. Well, And here we are 10 years later. We are married and we, and we have two beautiful boys. The Lord has blessed us. You know, so... Is it possible to be a young black actress in Hollywood and wait for one man? Yes, it is. Um, yeah. It's hard to do, but you can do it. But you can you know? do it. Yes. Yeah. So, hey, Philippians 413, I can do all things through Christ who? Straight Amen. Amen. Now, I, I'm going to get my last question in before the panel does. Um, <laughs> okay. Now, as, as far as being with, you, you know, you call Marla Gibbs, Godmother, you call all of these. Uh, no, 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 no. Gma, Gma, Gma. Oh, oh, okay. Gma. Uh, but yes. She doesn't, to she's too cool. Term. She's too cool. She's too cool for, uh, she's too cool for grandma. She told me at a young age, she said, I'm your Gma baby. Cause I'm too cool for grandma. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, well, you have a term of endearment for all of them. Um, and what is, what yeah. is that like being uh, guided, covered uh, by all of these forces? Because each one of them is a force in their own right. And most people would be Absolutely. happy to be to have one, but you have several people that are on yeah, your no. side that are looking out for you. How is that for you? That is, you're going to get me emotional. Um, <laughs> it's, it's something I don't take lightly because um, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. Um, even personally in my own life, I had many highs and lows um, with my own relationship with my parents. And so when I got married, um, my own parents weren't at my wedding, you know? And um, my, my grandpa Bill and my uncle Jerome, they gave me away at my wedding. And my grandpa Bill is Bill Cobbs who played, if you ever saw um, The Bodyguard with Whitney Houston and mm -hmm. Kevin Costner, he played Whitney Houston's dad in The Bodyguard. He was my grandpa and I'll fly away my first TV series. And so he's the one, he and my uncle Jerome, they gave me away at my wedding, you know, and my bridal shower, Gma, you know, grandmother Marla Gibbs, she was right there. And her daughter, my auntie uh, Angela, Angela Gibbs, who uh, was in the movie Straight Outta Compton, that's, that's Marla Gibbs' own daughter. Um, yeah. They were at my bridal shower, you know what I'm saying? And so I... I'm so blessed to have that blessing, you know, and even one of uh, your your guests that's actually watching the show right now, one of your viewers, uh, April Whedon um, White, that's on there now, she, we met through the entertainment industry. She's a stunt woman, you know, and wow. she was at my wedding, you know, and her husband did our blessing and did our, um, our, our uh, prayer at our wedding reception. So 
to have those relationships. My mother from Preacher's Kid, Ella Joyce, my Christian film Preacher's Kid from Warner Brothers that I did with Latoya Luckett from Destiny's Child. Um, Ella Joyce played my mother in that movie. And I also did the TV show Rock with her when I played a little girl that had AIDS. Uh, she was at my wedding. So when you looked around at my wedding, at my family, all of my Hollywood family was there supporting right. me. And right. that, was, that was so uplifting and nurturing to me because they helped strengthen my walk in Christ and, and they re reaffirmed my faith and my reverence to God and kept me on the straight and narrow. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about my late, wonderful, another adopted grandma, Cicely Tyson in heaven. You know, mm. she was so involved in my formative years with me as a young girl coming up. Another one of my mentors was, uh, you know, Dr. Maya Angelou. Um, you know, I remember being at her house and baking cookies with her as a little girl. And she always called me her joy. She never called me Raven. She said, my joy, my joy. You know, it's, it's Mother Esther Roll, the mother from Good Times. Uh, she played my grandmother uh. in the movie How to Make an American Quilt. Um, with Winona Ryder and Anne Bancroft. Um, in that wow. movie, I played I played uh, the character Anna. And when I was a little girl, a slave girl on the plantation, Esther Roll was my grandmother, and my character grew up into Maya Angelou. So Maya Angelou and I, we, we played the same character. And Alfre Woodard was my daughter in that movie because she was the daughter to Maya Angelou. So I've had a, a lot of blessings and, you know, such beautiful relationships, you know, even, you know, the wonderful, <laughs> the, the, the wonderful iconic, I, I can't even, I don't, there are no words, but the iconic, you know, B.B. King, B.B. King, he was so close to me when I was a little girl, we used to sing blues together, you know, and um, he, he was, he had taped every episode of I'll Fly Away, my whole TV series, he taped it all, you know? Um, it's been a blessing. What does that mean to me? There are no words for it. I'm just, um, I'm grateful to God. I'm humbled and I'm grateful to God for my entertainment family being there for me. My grandpa, Bill, he has been at every graduation that I've had from kindergarten through high school and college, you know? so. And that's the one that gave me away. So, you know, that that in and of itself is a, is a beautiful blessing. I just want everybody Amen. to know before I end today that I am so pleased to be here on your show, Miss Sandy. And I would love it if you would have a cameo in one of our movies. I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh. <laughs> I would love it if you could come on to one of our films. We're, we're doing our two Christmas movies later this year and we would love we would be honored if we could have a sandy rose cameo uh, I, you don't have to answer me now i'm, I'm a little oh, i can tell you uh that, that's a yes for a thousand please thank you so we would love to, <laughs> we would love to have you a part and anybody that is doing any gospel music or anyone that's watching the show right now any gospel music producers or um, you know, gospel singers that are watching. I would I I love collaborating. I love working on wonderful projects. As I said, I'm entering into the music industry as well uh, um, right now. And so, if anyone wants to get in contact with me for any shows or uh, to come and sing or any duets or anything of that sort, please reach out to Cynthia Busby, my publicist at Busby Promotions at AOL.com. That's Busby Promotions with an S at AOL.com. So I am so blessed to be here. Um, our Christmas movies are coming out and we're going to actually have Gma Marla Gibbs is going to be in one of the films, just so you know, Miss Sandy. We have Marla Gibbs is going to be in it. Um, Grandpa Bill, if you remember Gary Leroy Gray, um, he's my childhood best friend and my brother in Christ. He was man of honor at my wedding. He was, he played young, I played young Tina Turner. He played young Tiger Woods in the Tiger Woods story. And oh, um, wow. he also he also was a Cosby kid. You know, the oldest daughter on the Cosby show, she had twins, Winnie and Nelson. He's Nelson. He's Nelson. He and, oh. and uh, Malcolm Jamal, he and Malcolm Jamal Warner, Tatiana Ali, and myself will all be in the Christmas movie. And so um, we're just so blessed and honored that um, 
the Lord has blessed us to team up with Buffalo 8 Productions. We have Matt Helderman. They produced um, the wonderful projects on uh, Netflix that are going on right now that they have the Jeffrey Dahmer series that's on Netflix, that, that dark, um, sinister, um, villainous character that, um, that created all those horrible, horrible atrocities. They have those films, but they also have a lighter side as well. They do holiday content and Christian content. And so that's where we come in on the lighter note. Um, but uh, we're blessed to be working with uh, Buffalo 8 and Bonded Media on these projects. And we have our wonderful producers, Patrick St. Fleur, is executive, executive producing with us, and um, Anna Convery and uh, Brian Olson. And my wonderful husband, Sean Dinwiddie, will be directing the film. He directed another Christian movie that I'm sure you all are familiar with. Um, it was was the number one Christian film at the box office when it came out and it won a Dove Award. The Dove Awards are the Dove Awards are to Christian film as the Stellar Awards are to Christian music. Right, and so right. they won Best Picture. Um, and it's I'm in love with a church girl. I'm in love with a church girl starring oh. uh, the rapper, the hip hop artist Ja Rule and Stephen Baldwin and um, Adrian Bailon from the Cheetah Girls. She's also so on um, uh, The Real, the talk show, The Real, um, she stars in the film with Ja Rule and my husband executive produced that film. And then he's going to direct our Christian Christmas movies coming out. So we're very honored and blessed by God for these awesome, amazing opportunities. Amen. Wow, wow. Amen. And I just want to echo, um, I'm going to let April Weed and White speak for everybody. And we love you. Uh, and she just put it on the screen and and thank you. That's my big sister. And yeah. I also see my auntie Cassandra out there too. Hi, Auntie Cassandra Sanders. <laughs> so yeah. Wow, wow. Both Amen. of them were at my Amen. wedding. So yes. Amen. Amen. So we're gonna do our uh round robin and we'll let Teresa and then we'll let Richard go and uh we'll close it out. Teresa. Uh you know, Raven. I, I I was listening to you um, talk about your wedding and you know what? When you don't have something, God will give it to you. If you don't have the family that uh, uh, he created for you, he'll give you what you stand in need of. And I know somebody on this show who knows all too well about that. Amen. But um, uh, you've been a blessed young lady from from a toddler on up, and I am so happy for you with the success. I believe that God has blessed you because you have been so faithful to him. And uh, when you, you talked about your uh, your celibacy, um, you know, what came to my mind was Tim Tebow. He dated mm. girl after girl, but he didn't find the one who had the qualities that he was looking for until very you know later on mm. in life. And so the Lord blessed him with a beautiful girl. And I know that they're very happy. So it, you're right; it can be done. Um, so we, you know, you just have to. Uh, young people have to uh, decide. You know, am I going to follow the Bible or not? Am That's I going to do do Amen. what's right or not? They have to make that decision. But thank you for being a wonderful, wonderful uh, example uh, to all of us, young and old. Uh, and I can see God's hand on you. And we just uh, pray God's blessings on your production company and everything you want to do. And uh, you know, you got on this feed, you got choir members on there, you've got musicians, so you got your whole <laughs> choir on the feed right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> Love you, yeah, my yeah. choir and Uncle HB. Yeah, you got them all on there. Yes. So thank you so much for being a choir. Thank you for being a wonderful thank guest. You. God bless you. Thank you. Really. All right. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank God for being here. Thank uh, Sandy Rose for allowing me to be here with you and Sister Teresa. I'm usually not this quiet. I usually say something during the program, but my computer is under attack right now. So I had to get on my phone and to say what I have to say. I had six questions for you and you answered five of them. So I guess I needed to be quiet anyway. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> Uh, well, I'm glad I answered wanted, your question. Yes. Uh, I did want to uh, uh, make recognition to April White, uh, First Lady April White, who is a stunt yes. woman in Hollywood. April, I will be calling you so you can get ready to get on the show and tell your husband 
Pastor B.J. White, to hello. Yes. And I just wanted to say God bless you. For some reason, we can't connect. Cynthia Busby, let's thank Cynthia. She waited five minutes before you sat down at the dinner table to invite me to dinner. She knows I live 100 miles from L.A. But anyway, thank you. One day we will meet. <laughs> Yes, we will. It will happen. Amen. All right. Well, we want to thank you so much, so very much, Raven, and the rest of the comments we're going to put on during our closing. Thank you so much. And we wish God's wonderful, greatest blessings upon you and whatever you put your hands to, because we know that God is in the mix. Um, yes. And you thank just you. have to just, you keep him first and he works for you. Yes, he does. He makes all things for our good. He will take our burden and turn them into blessings. Yes, he will. And I want to just thank you again for having me on the show and give a shout out to my home churches. I have uh, my home churches in Los Angeles, California that I grew up attending, uh, West Angeles Kojic Church. Um, all right. Uh, my wonderful pa Bishop Blake, Pastor Blake there, and uh, Pastor Dudley C. Rutherford, Shepherd of the Hills, and in South Carolina, my family's home church. Um, Bethel AME in St. Matthews, Pastor uh, Washington and First Lady Mildred Washington, and um, just our wonderful WMS team there, uh, my Aunt Iris, uh, Iris Larrymore, and um, our Reformation Lutheran Church as well that we attend in Columbia, South Carolina. So, and that is an affirming church for everybody uh, from every walk of life. And we're so blessed um, to be, have been on your show today. Thank you so much for your hospitality and your leadership. And congratulations, Miss Stella Award winner. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, uh, she said yes. <laughs> uh, so holla at your girl uh, when okay. you want to do something. Yes. Right. She said yes. She said, she said yes. Okay. She said hey. yes. She <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we want to thank everybody for tuning in today. We will be here at eight o'clock. We're having Bible quiz study. So if you all want to participate, if you like Bible quiz, if you like Bible study, tune in. We have a wonderful time at eight o'clock uh, right here in the next hour, right here with um Pastor Tony Weaver, and it's in the word with Pastor Tony Weaver. And then tomorrow we'll have Bishop Mitchell, then we'll come on, and then we'll have Nikki's show. So we uh, are here just spreading the gospel, however we can get it out to as many people as can receive it. Um, and we thank God for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Raven, for being on this show. Thank we you. love you. Thank you, everybody that tuned in, all of our special people who tuned in. And uh, just to see you, Raven, uh, we thank you. We thank them for tuning in for that. And just to let you know that we love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. And night, night, everybody. Night, night. God bless. God bless. Elder Rudolph Stanfield.
you for listening to The Sandy Rose Show with your host, Sandy Rose. If you have enjoyed this broadcast, won't you consider liking and sharing this with a friend or family member? We'd love for you to share it on your Facebook page. Thank you for tuning to WVTC Radio Detroit. Remember to like and share this broadcast with a friend. We are WVTC, winning victory through Christ. You're listening to WVTC, Gospel Radio Detroit, and we're flowing in the spirit.